Hello everyone and thank you for joining. My name is Nilashish, I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat and today we're going to cover a demo on operational state assessment using Ansible. We'll start off by looking at some playbooks and then see them in action as a workflow on automation controller. Let's get started. In this demo, we'll be working on four Cisco CSR routers that are eBGP neighbors and are also advertising routes to each other. All the four hosts in our inventory have host files defined that contains the list of peers and their BGP global as well as their BGP address family configuration and structured data. This will be used to remediate config drifts in case there is a failure in the BGP operational state validation. Our workflow will begin with some health checks that includes verifying that the CPU utilization on all the phone nodes hasn't exceeded a certain threshold over the last five minutes. It would then check if the interfaces on all the nodes are up or not. And finally, it would validate the connectivity across all the peers. In this playbook, we use the CLI parse module from the Ansible.utils collection to execute show processes CPU on all the phone nodes. And then we pass the output of that command to the PyATS parser, which converts that data into a much more convenient structured format. We then query that data to evaluate if the CPU utilization over the last five minutes is within 80% or not. In the next playbook, we again use the CLI parse module to execute show IP interface on all the hosts and then pass that data to the PyATS parser. But this time, we use the Evaluate plugin from the Ansible Tools collection to evaluate that data against a predefined schema in the interface.json file. This schema verifies that for all interfaces on the routers, the following properties are met. It checks if it is enabled, its operational status is up. The MTU lies in between a certain predefined range. The split horizon rule is enabled. And the interfaces have at least one IPv4 address associated with them. If both the CPU and the interface checks have passed, we move on to verify connectivity among all the nodes. To do that, we include the ping.yml task and loop that over the list of peers for every host, which, as we saw previously, is defined in the host files. In the ping.yml task, we use the iOS ping module to send five ICMP echoes to every peer and then retry it five times with a delay of two seconds until a packet loss of 0% is received. At this point, if all the checks have passed, we proceed towards verifying the operational state of PGP running on these routers. To do so, we use our trusted CLI parse module again to run show PGP neighbors on all the routers and then pass the output to PyATS. We retry this task five times with a delay of five seconds in between until the string PGP state established is found in the output. To add another layer of validation, this PyATS parse data is then evaluated against predefined JSON schemas for every host. These host-specific schemas define the total number of prefixes that are to be received via PGP from every neighbor, the neighbor statuses, whether they're established or not, and the neighbor AS numbers. Now, if this check fails, it means that a config drift might have happened and we need to remediate it. To do so, we use the bgp.yml playbook where we push both the bgp global and the bgp address family facts that are stored in the host was for these routers through their respective resource modules. Since these are run with state replaced and state overridden, any missing config will be added back 
and superfluous configs will be removed. All right, so now that we have looked into all the playbooks and the schemas, let's hop on over to Automation Controller and see this running as a workflow. A workflow is already created, and as we previously discussed, it's going to start off by checking the interface statuses, the CPU utilization, and then check reachability across all the nodes, and finally validate the BGP operational state. If that fails, the remediation task is going to get kicked off, and once that ends, we're going to revalidate the BGP operational state just to confirm that everything is working as expected. Let's run this. At this point, since all the devices are properly configured, all the checks would pass and the remediation task won't be triggered. Next, we'll introduce LNS changes on all the four devices and relaunch the workflow. This time, the first validation task failed, thereby triggering the remediation playbook, which pushes all the missing config lines to the devices. The second validation task now passes successfully, thereby ensuring that the devices are back to running as expected. So that brings us to the end of this demo. If you found this interesting, there's a two-part block that covers these use cases with much more details. Link would be down in the description below. Thank you and happy automating.